Right, welcome back to the vlog guys. Some more playing series stuff this week. So from here on out until we get to Spain, hopefully in January, this is just gonna be putting in some work. Um, I can actually really get focused on swing stuff now um, in this sort of like two month break from competition. I can really get focused on technique, trying to make the changes that I wanna make, which are quite subtle, but will make quite a big difference. And then we'll be uh, back out of Spain, um, getting some really solid practice in and competition. But for the time being, um, we're Clifton or Drum Range the home of golf. I've got some practice going on here. I have organized my practice session into, believe it or not, slots of five. There we go, slots of five. So five ball intervals. So the things I'm working on, um, I talked about in the last session, but I'll quickly talk about them now as well. Um, but this is basically how I'm working it. So I'm doing four exaggerated moves, then one golf swing going through pre-shot routine. Lots of break in between, lots of rehearsals in between. Um, trying to work the new feelings in. Right, so let's start with the stuff that was wrong previously. So my posture, I always used to be on my toes, lent over it, um, with my armpits too far over my feet, which isn't the most balanced start to a golf swing. When you do that and you're too far over and you're on your toes, you're gonna try and wanna find balance. And usually that means going this way, which is all, all which is obviously a killer move for me. The other thing that I do, is they get off it a lot and I think this is from long drive trying to spending years trying to get high and off of it um, my tendency now is to get low and off of it and it's just not a good position when you get low and off of it you can't really use the ground so you end up using the ground early which is what I do I start pushing early that means when you start pushing early you lose your posture again chucking hands and these both lead on to me spending years going from here to here this way and when you chuck it and when you lose posture and you start to drive the hips you have to release the hands to get to the ball which means adding loft do all that stuff you don't want to do so i'm trying to get more here you notice that my head actually stays at height it doesn't drop and go right so that means my spine's actually like extending upwards and from this position I can then drive into the floor properly. So my exaggerated feels at the moment about a golf club, I'm trying to feel like, well firstly posture's in the right place, but secondly, I go, my head goes up and that way. So I go like this, and then I try and almost plant into the floor, but increase angles as much as possible, nice and high. And then drive the ass back, but weight goes through the center and lose all that height. Now I know that sounds, now I know that looks really exaggerated, but if you wanna change a move, I think this is one of the things that I came up against when I was trying to make swing changes this year. I was trying to feel like I was making the perfect move, but in reality, you're only changing your natural move slightly. Um, and a lot of pros talk about this, and you see Tiger Woods rehearse these like crazy rehearsals, but that's why it's best to have a phase feeling like you're exaggerating the move and going way too far. So then you'll, you'll start to calibrate and find the middle, which is right. So that's what I'm doing with these first, first four balls. One practice drill, where I get really high and then lose all that angle and hit it, four balls. So this is me getting target focused, making a golf swing. Watch my head go right. It's good. And yeah, that's one thing to remember when you are trying to make changes and you are doing the exaggerated moves, just putting club on ball is an important thing. It doesn't matter where the ball goes at all. Like I hit a thin, a shank, a big right. Occasionally you catch one. That one that I did catch with that, was the flight that I'm looking for. What I'm trying to do is present better launch conditions at impact. So when I get off of it, humpy, flippy, I'm presenting like this amount of loft. And when you, when you swing it, say like over 100 miles an hour with six iron, for instance, so I swing it like 101, 102 with six iron. If you add any more loft, it means you're adding spin. 
you then hit down at a tiny bit, you're adding more spin. That was one of my biggest killers throughout the year would be having 200 yards, 15 mile an hour wind into. And if I would hit anything full, it would just be straight up into the wind, out of control ball flight, which is why I'm making these changes. Firstly, to be a more consistent action that is less reliant on movement, like off and on the ball. But more importantly, I can present less loft, more powerful impact position. There's no like flip. It's just your low driving and turning, controlling the club face, better ball flight. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much why I'm trying to make the change. Now I'm going to do some demonstrations for my online lessons. So I haven't really pushed this all year um, as I've been playing golf and it's been a bit busy to do online lessons but I am back doing them now. So I'm going to keep the price the same on the website which is $29.99 for the next few weeks. So if you are interested in online lessons this winter, if you sign up in the next two weeks you'll be at that rate and you'll be flat rated then I'll give you a discount code so you continue to pay that rate moving forward for the other people that miss that two weeks it's going to go up slightly and then stay at that rate basically so i've got two students to do now i've done the swing analysis at home which is where i get the golf swing up break it down obviously take taking all the information that they've given me break their swing down from from both views and then done my analysis on the screen and now i take the camera here and i do the demonstration put it all together now one of the guys that i'm doing a lesson with right now is called tom he is like six months in and he's had He's had, he's on to like lesson seven, I think. Handicaps continue to come down this year. Playing some really good golf at the moment. The swing, I think I'm gonna do a video just on his sort of like swing evolution from this time we started working together to now. If not, I'll try and get it up now for you. But it's, it's changed massively and just shows that online lessons can actually work. As long as you get like enough information and then portray the information back in a way that makes sense there's there's no reason why you can't have a golf lesson literally over the internet so i, I was going through this vlog basically talking about how I'm now able to make swing changes before I go to Spain because I haven't got any competitions coming up. So I got a message today earlier on from the Clutch Tour saying, Hi James, do you want to play in a Pro-Am um, at Coolhampton? It's one of their, like the first of their winter events. And uh, I looked it up, see where it was, just past Southampton and thought, okay, let's do it. So oh, do it we are now in a day's in in uh, Winchester. Just, it is, what is it? It's like half nine, 10 o'clock and uh, I've got tea time tomorrow at 10.30. I haven't actually played a round of golf for a while because I was thinking about going into full-on swing mode, but when I got the news today, I went to the drawing range to hit some balls and the swing actually felt quite good. So we're gonna, I'm gonna have a look on Google Earth now, check the golf course out because I haven't seen it yet. Um, sort of plot my way around just on Google Earth. Um, in fact, I'm gonna show you some of that now. Straight onto Google Earth, have a look at Cole Hampton, and now what we've got to do is try and work out which the first hole is because that's not that obvious. So I'm gonna work out, have a look at the scorecard, see like the length of the first hole. It looks like they've got a nice driving range, which is good. Um, and then I'll sort of like find the wide spot. So on here you can go, um, for instance, you can go from where, let's put it into yards. So you can go from out of bounds to the trees over here. You can see, right, I've got 54 yards at a certain spot. And sort of plot your way around, find the wide spots, hit it into the widest spots, not leaving yourself too far from the green, and sort of like weigh up what the right option is off the tee based on the statistics, which is basically this like decade system uh, that, that that guy has. I can't remember his name. From what it looks like is just like a tree-lined parkland course up and down. Let's have a look on Google Earth. Yeah, sort of like found my way around the golf course. Um, worked out sort of like where, 
if there's like any wide holes where there's like a par five or par four with dog legs and stuff, it's what Steve Sorrow is telling me that you can work out what your lines are and where the widest points are on the fairways. But this looks pretty much like a straight up, straight down Parkland course, tree lined. There's not really like wide areas and narrow areas. It sort of looks like it's fairly consistent the whole way up. It's uh, 6,400 yards. Um, how many par fives? Three par fives, par 71. God, this is very far around here. Oh. Is that what's coming around tomorrow? Yep. Mate, I mean, James Butcher in the house. Attract man. less attention. James I kind of Butcher want... is here playing golf. Could I, someone just like follow me around and film? Is that all right? Hey, go ahead. As long as it's discreet. It's all good, James. All good, mate. Yeah. Now, ready. Hello, Tom. How you doing, mate? Just like that. Right, good morning. We are just getting up, getting ready, getting some uh, breakfast at the garage over there, and then we're getting down the golf course to Corehampton um, to have a first look. Probably got about 45 minutes when we get there, which is fine. Hit some few, hit a few balls, and then, uh, and then get into it. So tournament recap first, it was, uh, yeah, not a good tournament. I don't really feel like there's any point in going into um, each hole and all that stuff. It's just a bad round of golf. I sort of, I was fully into swing change mode um, and some of the some of the sessions that I've done leading up to that were full on like exaggerated moves. So going back to trying to find like a natural feel list just didn't work, didn't really know where the ball was going. Shot a load going out, shot like level coming back. So yeah, just um, just not a good tournament. And it made me realize that you can't try and suddenly play a competitive round of golf when you're trying to make swing changes. You can't be like, right, swing changes. But actually, do you know what? Tomorrow I'm gonna go and play a tournament and, and go and play and play well um, without a practice round. You know, it's just not a very wise decision. Ended up being, you know, not a very fruitful endeavor. But anyway, I sort of just want to talk about um, going into next year and briefly discuss what I've done this year in terms of like practice so i spent most of this year either playing competitive golf playing a practice round um or sort of like editing youtube videos um and doing a few other things as well i didn't I haven't this year had a base where i've actually practiced out of my practice has been hitting balls on the driving range um sort of like sporadically and then the day before tournament playing a practice round and then playing a tournament round and then probably spending a few days off then hitting a few balls in the range. All in all, it, it's just not the recipe for successful golf. My golf's obviously improved this year because I made a few decent swing changes, had um, a bit of competition experience and I've met some good people who've got some really good knowledge and I'm gonna do a video on uh, the things that I've learned from them. But next year, so hopefully I'll be able to go to Spain in January and spend a few months out there practicing, playing a few tournaments and getting really sharp, ready for next year. Then when we get back, I'm gonna find a home club that I can practice and play out of. My goal is to make the swing changes that I need to make over the next few months 
So then by halfway through the Spain trip, I'm pretty much into right playing mode and then I can play some competitive golf out there, then come back and play a whole competitive season, not really tinkering around too much, but, but just focusing on scoring and actually, you know, playing golf. My only rounds of golf this year were either practice rounds or competition rounds. And for instance, to speak to Steve, if ever I like have a chat with him on the phone, I'm like, what we've been up to? He's like, yeah, just, just been playing, mate. Playing, playing at Cumberwell. Most days playing, just playing golf with mates, make it competitive, whatever, just getting out and actually playing golf. Just to summarize, I guess, um, the swing's definitely come a long way from when I started working at the start of this year out in Spain. I remember playing a few Gecko events and like my, I think my best round was like two, three of a par. Uh, and at that point I was happy, but you know, progression for the year. I've had tournaments when I've been under par, I've had a few like good under par rounds. So I actually feel like I can go out next year, capitalize on the things that I've learned, the new, the improved golf swing, and just go out and play golf and hopefully compete. Now this vlog series is obviously gonna run all the way up to next year. I'm gonna be um, tracking my results on the West region, on the Jamiga tour, um, providing we can still play. So now, what happens to the channel? Um, I'm not really sure over the next few weeks. I have got a few video ideas, but I definitely don't wanna go into what I did last time. There was a lockdown and just trying to get content together just because I feel like I have to upload. And if you just do like day in the life vlogs of someone in lockdown, it's just like, no, I just don't wanna keep feeding YouTube of that shite. Um, there's one thing that may be happening over in like two weeks time. I'm just waiting to hear back from a certain country's government as to if I can or cannot do this. I'm not gonna give it away yet. Next year as a whole, I wanna film as many competition rounds as possible and I want to play as many matches against good players as possible and just have this channel be about like actual golf like real golf um there's definitely lots of channels doing different stuff now but i feel like there's not that many channels that focus on just pure golf and even if other channels do go and play it's like all cut up and there's loads of b-roll and stuff but i want to have a lot of good matches with good players and some fun ones with you know, the likes of Flair and that, but you know, 18 hole course vlogs. I'm investing in these microphones soon, so that means when I play the matches, so for instance, me and whoever go out and play would both be mic'd up, um, which I feel like is just gonna improve the content that bit more, and then I'm gonna work on trying to get some shot traces in as well. Thanks for watching this series so far. Um, I hope you're all all right in lockdown and stuff. Yeah, wherever you are, I hope you're good. Thanks for continuing to watch and subscribe and like the videos and uh, I will be back soon.